Ecclesiastes is the closest text that we have in the Old Testament to a philosophical discussion. And I would even argue that the philosophy of Ecclesiastes is very much aligned with the more modern branch of philosophy known as existentialism. And for those of you who are not familiar with existentialist philosophy, it is an area of philosophy that is really interested in the way that we view life. Existentialists argue that there is not a predetermined or set meaning in life, and that people are free to define for themselves what their meaning or purpose is or will be. And Christian existentialists tend to argue that God made humanity without a specific goal or purpose in mind, which makes people free to decide for themselves as individuals what their meaning in life will be. And all of what I just said can be pretty much summarized by the words of the French philosopher Jean-Paul Sartre, who said in three simple words, essence precedes existence. And as a fun fact, I will add that because I have such a wonderful and loving wife, I was able to name our first cat after the Christian existentialist Soren Kierkegaard. So, thank you. Don't you hate eyelashes? What this particular text in Ecclesiastes is trying to tell us is exactly what lies at the heart of existentialist philosophy, which is basically that there are only two guarantees in life. The first being that one day you're born, and the second, that one day you'll die. And I think this is another great example of how Ecclesiastes can start to initially be viewed in a very negative way. But in being reminded of the fact that the only guaranteed events in life are birth and death, we are also given a very frustrating image of what the freedom of existence can and too often does look like. That fate does not differentiate between those who do good and those that do not. It would be really, really wonderful if doing good things all the time meant that God would bless you more than others. And it would even be a little bit wonderful if at the very least by doing good things all the time meant that God would bless you more than people that do hateful things. But this passage reminds us that unfortunately that is not true. People that work to do so much good in the world are not blessed any more or less by God than those that we feel commit so much hate. Everyone, no matter who they are or where they are in life's journey, are capable of suffering from the same misfortunes in life. This is not to say, however, that everyone is born with the same amount of chances to thrive. Unfortunately, while God did not create humanity to be privileged over one another, society has evolved to that extent. There are systems that have been put in place that make it extremely difficult or impossible for some individuals to thrive in life. In the scope of the world, this can be seen with Russia refusing to recognize Ukraine's sovereignty, which has led to thousands of deaths due to Russian fascists refusing to let a nation of people determine their own identity. Thank you. <laughs> in the scope of the United States, this can be seen in Florida with their governmental leaders pushing a don't say gay bill where members of the LGBTQ plus community are being told that their right to define for themselves who they are does not matter. In the scope of Kentucky, this can be seen with lawmakers that are trying to make it impossible for women to have abortions, where women are being told that they do not have any right to choose what can or cannot be done to their bodies. And in Louisville, this can be seen in a city where the bus system has discontinued giving out individual bus tickets, which tells low income individuals that their leaders do not care about their existence as it's impossible to get to your job, school, the grocery or doctor without a vehicle in Louisville. But this is not where the narrative of Ecclesiastes ends for us, because we are told that we do not have to be defined by the systems that are in play in our lives. Ecclesiastes tells us that life is something 
that we can and should find ways to be joyful in. But this is yet another place where the advice becomes difficult as it demands that we be intentional about making meaning in our lives. It would be so easy when faced with the cruelness of life to simply give up and do nothing. But I don't think that giving up is the answer. In fact, I think we can even go one step further by working to dismantle the systems in society that are in place to keep people from being able to make meaning in their lives. Now, this semester, I've been taking a course on black theology, and I cannot tell you how many times that the theme of making meaning in life in the face of violence and oppression has come up in class. Throughout American history, the black community has time and time again been the victim of extreme violence at the hands of white America. The history of chattel slavery, Jim Crow laws, and ongoing police brutality. Our black sisters and brothers have seen the absolute worst that our society has to offer. Yet this violence that was aimed, aimed towards stripping black individuals of their identity and value has not succeeded. Instead, the black community fought back against the systems of oppression by naming the injustices taking place, by creating spaces where they can express themselves, and by demanding that society acknowledge their humanity. And I think that this same spirit of resistance can be seen all around us, working to make, make it possible for individuals to thrive and make their own meaning in life. In the scope of the world, this looks like Ukrainians rising up against what looked like insurmountable odds to fight off their Russian invaders and say not only to Russia, but to the whole world that they are Ukraine and that they find great joy and purpose in their identity. In the scope of the United States, this looks like Disney, a multi-billion dollar company, standing up to the Florida government by condemning the don't say gay legislation and declaring that they will do everything they can to help repeal such hateful legislation that is aimed at stripping individuals of their identity. In the scope of Kentucky, this looks like a federal judge blocking Kentucky's anti-abortion legislation which now gives activists dedicated to ensuring that women have the right to define for themselves what they can do to their body, more ground to stand on in their fight against injustice. In the scope of Louisville, this looks like the Coalition for the Homeless that is actively seeking to make it easier for homeless and low income individuals to be able to climb out of the deep hole of poverty and get back on their feet. This is something they do by educating the community on issues facing the homeless and low income families, while also advocating for legislation that provides more opportunities for low to no income individuals. Each of the things that I've mentioned above are examples of where individuals have decided that they will work together to make the world a place where people can be free to decide for themselves who they are and what they want to be. And this is the essence of what we are being told here to do in Ecclesiastes, in both this passage and the larger narrative. We are free to decide what our meaning and purpose is in the world. But as the text reminds us, the only guarantee we have is that everyone is born and everyone eventually dies. However, what I think is the most important to know and remember is that not everyone is given the same chances in life. So as you reflect and decide on what your purpose or essence is in life, I would encourage you to think about your sisters and brothers in your community. They're not afforded the same opportunities in life. And then I would encourage you to work towards making the world a more equitable place. It is up to us to make life on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. It is now time for our tithes and offerings. If you wish to donate, you can do so at 
the Emanuel UCC website by clicking donate. You can also send a check into the office or utilize uh, the plate out in the North X. Let us pray. Dear God, all good gifts come from you, and from these riches we bring this offering. Help us to use it for your purpose in this place and for the benefit of those in need. Help us to be generous givers, both of our money and our lives, that we might make a difference in our church, community, and our world. Amen. seated. Now please join me in our closing prayer. Loving God, you have called forth disciples and prophets to live and speak your word. Give us ears to hear, lives to respond, and voices to proclaim the good news of salvation which we know in our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. We ask your strength and nourishment for the journey, especially upon those in our hearts who need your special care. Steve, David, Bill and Gail, Jennifer, Teresa, the families from Afghanistan, Afghanistan resettling in the US, including the two that we are supporting, all who are homebound or in nursing and senior facilities, Jane, Mary Lou, Mary Ellen, Betty, Doris, Vicki, and May. Those still experiencing the effects of the pandemic and health, stress, and spirit, the leaders of our city, people throughout the world experiencing disasters, oppression, and war, especially Ukraine and Russia, and the soldiers going over in support, and our enemies, whomever they may be, that they know your blessings and love. <clears throat> and all those whom the church may not know, but who very much need our prayers, all of these we hold in our hearts as we pray as Jesus taught us to our maker, our mother, and our father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> Friends, go out into the world guided by the Spirit to let your inner light shine. Follow the sound of your genuine and decide for yourself who you are and what you have to offer. Know that you are loved, valued, and that the world is a better place because you are in it. Go in peace. <laughs>